power functions. A power function is any function in the form f of x equals a x to the b. Or if you want to think about it in transformation form, it would be f of x equals a x minus h to the b uh, plus k. Where b is just any power and a, h, and k are uh, you know, your basic transformations. One thing that you want to pay close attention to is that these look really, really, really close to exponential functions. But it's not an exponential function. You'll notice because the variable is the base of this problem or this function. So that's what makes it different. The variable is the base. In an exponential function, the base is always a, a constant. It's always 2, or it's always e, or it's always pi. It's always a number that's given, and the exponent is in the power. But in this case, for power functions, it's the base that is the variable. That's what makes it a little bit different. You already know a few of the common power functions. So some of the common ones, well, there's everybody's favorite, which is the quadratic one, right? And the quadratic one is just where the power is 2. Or there's the cubic one, where the power is 3. And the quartic where the power is 4. You should be recognizing these words from um, our polynomial work that we did. And quintic, where the power is 5. And so on and so forth. You can keep going forever. There aren't fancy words for much past quintic, but uh, you get the general idea. Every, anything, it's where a variable is raised to a power, and that would be a power function. One thing to note before we move on to looking at some examples of this is that the power can be a fraction, and we'll look at a couple examples of these. There are two main types of power functions. There are even power functions and there are odd power functions. So even power functions have even powers. So quadratic, where the power was 2, that's an even function. Or uh, quartic, or uh, any of the others where the power is even, divisible by 2. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on, 100, a million. If it's divisible by 2, it's even. Now the definition, though, of an even function is not, not everything with the power of 2 makes it even. It is symmetric. about the y-axis. So that means if you think about a quadratic function, and you were to draw your basic parent parabola, it's symmetric about the y-axis. You could fold it in half and the, and the sides would match up with each other. The official uh, algebraic definition of an even function is when f of x is the same as f of negative x. You can think about a quadratic where you have 1 and negative 1. The value, the y value, is the same. That's what makes something an even function. So now let's think about odd functions. Odd functions, well, from the word, I bet you can figure out that the powers are odd. So 3, 5, 7, and so on and so forth. Odd functions are symmetric, but they're not symmetric about a line. They actually have rotational symmetry. They're symmetric about the origin. Remember, the origin is the point zero, 0. So if we were to think about a cubic graph, a cubic graph kind of looks like a little snake there. And uh, a you can kind of see that if you were to take this and you were to rotate it about the origin, they would, it would match up with uh, the other part of it. That's what makes it odd. Odd functions have that rotational symmetry. 
the algebraic definition of an odd function is that negative f of x is equal to f of negative x. And you might also see it uh, written as f of x plus f of negative x equals zero. But really, if you think about the graphical representation of this symmetry, that's the easiest way I've found to determine whether something's odd or even. Um, and you can see, if I were to take the point 1, and I would go up 1, and there it is on the graph. Now, if we looked at negative 1, that would be f of negative x, you can see that it's negative 1 this time. So you can see how the algebraic relates to the graphical symmetry. So even and odd. We're going to look at some examples of these and try to figure out whether functions are even or odd power functions. I mentioned at the beginning that some of your powers can be fractions. And uh, with fractional powers or rational exponents, these are neither even or odd. So we don't worry about the symmetry at all for these. However, they do come into play with some of the other power function features. So we are going to talk about them. So what do I mean by a fraction as a power? Well, let's say I had y equals the square root of x. Another way that I could write this is y equals x to the 1 half power. So you can see that the relationship is that the square root is represented by the 1 half power. So if I were to say, oh, I have uh, 9 to the 1 half, that equals 3. Because all I'm saying is, what's the square root of 9? You can do this again with other numbers. So if I had y equals the cube root of x, so be the same as saying y equals x to the one third, and that would represent the cube root. So if I were to say, okay, let's have eight to the one third power, that just means what's the cube root of eight? The cube root of eight is two. So you can do this again. You could have y equals the fourth root of x, and that would be y equals x to the one fourth, and so on and so forth. So you can kind of see this relationship. We'll look at some of the graphs of these and how we can transform them in some of the later slides in this video. So let's look at an example of a function that would have a power, a power function. Let's have y equals x to the fourth plus three. We want to think, is this even? Is this odd or none? Is it neither? Well, let's think about what this graph would look like. If we think about transformations, we can see that, okay, this is x to the fourth power plus three. So by transforming it, we shifted it up three. x to the fourth power looks sort of like a flattened out parabola. So that would be a sketch of the graph, y equals x to the fourth power plus three. And this is actually symmetric about the y-axis, so it is even because of that symmetry. It's symmetric about the y-axis. You could check it out using the algebraic formulas too, but like I said, sometimes it's easier to think about the graphical representation. So let's uh, look at another fourth power. Let's look at y equals x plus 3 to the fourth. So now you can see how this one's a little bit different. This one has uh, a transformation to it, but what's happened here is it's actually been shifted 3 to the left. And then I can draw my sort of flattened out parabola, and that would be y equals x plus 3, all raised to the fourth power. In this case, it is not even, it is not odd, it's neither. So we can see that if you were to fold this graph across the y-axis like that, you would not end up with matching sides. It does not have that symmetry, so it's neither. Even though the power is even, the fact that it's not symmetric about the y-axis is what makes it even. So in this case, we say no, not even. But it was easy to sketch a graph of it. So now let's bring in some of those fraction powers. Let's say we have y equals x minus 1 to the 1 half minus 2. Now remember, when you see that 1 half power, really what this is saying is y equals the square root of x minus 1 minus 2. 
So if we want to think about what this would look like on a graph, I can sketch a graph of it. And if you think about your transformations, you can go, okay, well, it was shifted to the right one. It was shifted down two. That's the starting point. And if you think about what a square root graph looks like, it sort of looks like half a parabola. And we were able to sketch this power function. And again, when it has a fractional exponent, it is neither even nor odd. Let's look at a cube root. Let's say we had y equals x minus 1 to the 1 third minus 2. We'll keep it simple, keep the transformations the same. Here we would say this is the cube root of x minus 1 minus 2. And we can sketch a graph for this one as well. Again, you're going to start out by finding that point that's been shifted to the right one and has been shifted down 2. The cube root sort of just looks like a cubic graph that's been laid on its side. So it sort of makes a flattened out S shape. And that would be a cube root graph that's been shifted over 1 and down 2. And again, we don't have that symmetry for this thing. We don't think about, oh, is this symmetric about the x-axis or the y-axis? You can clearly see that it's not. It doesn't have a rotational symmetry either. So we don't need to say whether it's even or odd. It's clearly neither. All right, let's look at y equals x plus 1 cubed minus 7. And first let's think about whether it would be even, odd, or neither. Since this has an integer as the power, the power is 3, we can determine whether it's one of those three things. Um, let's look at the, let's think about the graph though, because that's going to help you answer the question. This graph has been shifted to the left 1 and down 7. And it's a cubic graph, so it's going to follow the same shape as the parent. It's going to make that sort of S shape. Ooh, my S sucks, but you get the idea. We're just sketching a graph. And so we can clearly see that while our tendency would be to say, oh, it's odd, it's actually not odd because it is not symmetric about the origin. And in this case, we would say it's neither. So uh, let's look at y equals negative 3x to the fifth. And again, we're going to think about whether this is even odd or neither. And we can do that because uh, we know we have that integer power. So let's think about sketching the graph of this one. I want to make a big one, so I'm going to put it over here. It doesn't have any shifts to it at all. In fact, the only transformation that's been done to this one is that it's been reflected over the x-axis. And it has a vertical stretch of 3. So if we were going to sketch this one, we would start at the origin. It hasn't been shifted at all. Now normally a graph with a power of 5 looks like a flattened out cubic. That's what a normal one looks like. But keep in mind that ours has been reflected and it has been stretched. So our graph is going to actually, it's hard to draw the stretch, skinnier, flat, skinny. That would be an approximation of our graph. And we can see that even though it's been reflected over the x-axis, we still have that rotational symmetry. You can see that if you were to take this guy and rotate about the origin, it would match up with the other part of the graph. So this one actually is odd. Usually a good rule of thumb with odd functions is that if it hasn't been shifted at all, it stays odd. If it has been shifted, all bets are off. Let's look at a couple more uh, fractional powers, and then really that's it. You can see that our uh, problems are just transformations. As long as you know what the parents are, you can do the transformations pretty easily. So let's say we have y equals negative 1 fourth x to the 1 half plus 3. And remember, what this means is y equals negative 1 fourth times the square root of x plus 3. So if we want to sketch this graph, 
Well, think about the transformations. That negative one-fourth is a reflection, and it is a vertical compression of one-fourth. And then we also have that shifting. So we have to think about a basic square root graph. There's your basic square root graph. And from our basic square root graph, we are going to reflect it. So then it's going to go down. It's also going to be a little bit flatter, and it's going to be shifted up 3. So for our transformed sketch, here's my transformed sketch of my slightly flatter square root that's been reflected, as well as shifted up 3. Again, since this is a fractional power, we don't need to consider even, odd, or neither. Let's look at one last one. Let's look at y equals negative x minus 2 to the 1 third. And remember, this means y equals negative the cube root of x minus 2. So you can see that transformation there that it's been shifted to the right 2. And it has been reflected over the x-axis. So let's sketch this. We know that the basic cube root graph, the basic one, sort of looks like that sideways S thing going on there. And for our graph, it's been reflected, so our S's are going to be, it's going to be flipped. And it's also been shifted over to. So instead of having an upper branch here on the side, the upper branch is going to be on the other side. The lower part is going to be on the lower side. Um, on the other side, and you can see how this was reflected over the x-axis. Then I shifted it over to the right two and finished sketching the graph. Again, with the fractional power, you don't need to consider whether it's even, odd, or neither. And that's really it for power functions. So we'll do a little bit of a recap, and again, it's just practicing those transformations more than anything else. So remember, a power function is just anything in the form y equals a x minus h to the b plus k. That's a power function. That's it. And you can think about even and odd power functions. Remember, even power functions are symmetric about the y-axis. You can fold them in half. And odd are symmetric about the origin, which means you can rotate them, and then the parts would match up. Um, the Probably the trickiest thing about this is to remember what your parent functions look like. So remember that if you had, let's say, x squared, that would be your basic parabola. And if you had x cubed, that's going to give you that little tall snaky thing. And any of the higher powers that are even or odd follow these patterns. So if I were to take x to the fourth, it's just going to look like a, oh, this is terrible. But you get the idea, a flattened out parabola. Or if I had x to the fifth, it's going to look like a, it's going to be slightly flatter there at the uh, origin. And then basically follows that same shape. And you can keep on going higher and higher from there. Now for our fractional, our fractional exponents, we want to think about those square root and cube root graphs. So just to remind you, the square root graph for x to the one half power sort of looks like half a parabola and it comes out like that. It only has that one little part to it because you can't take square roots of negatives. That's why the shape is how it is. However, you can take cube roots of negatives, and so that's why the cube root graph isn't just half. It has both parts. And just like with our integer powers, with our fractional powers, if you were to say, okay, x to the 1 fourth, again, that's going to be a slightly flattened out. But follow the same basic shape of a square root. And if we had x to the 1 fifth, same idea. Flatter. 
and you can go from there. The higher the power, the flatter it gets. If you were to look at x to the 100th power, it would be extremely flat around that origin area, but you would follow transformations the exact same way. And that's it for power functions.